Well, howdy everyone, and today I'm testing out a lens that I've desperately wanted to review for a long time, the Samyang XP 35mm f1.2, the fifth in their special line of premium quality manual focus lenses. The launch of this lens was mysteriously delayed for a year or two, but it's finally hitting the European market now at about £900 in the UK or around US$900, US so it's a premium price for what should be a classy lens. I'd like to thank Samyang's UK distributor for loaning me a copy of this lens for a few weeks for testing, although as usual this is a totally independent review. The lens is for full frame or APS-C digital SLR cameras and, at the moment, it seems to be only available in Canon EF mount, but you can use an adapter to mount it easily onto mirrorless camera systems. It worked perfectly on my Sony cameras with my Sigma MC11 mount converter, and my Sony A7R2 gave the lens image stabilisation. Nice. 35mm is my personal favourite focal length on a full frame camera and to get one as bright as f1.2 is uncommon. That can get you some lovely out of focus backgrounds even at this moderately wide angle, and that's without mentioning the very fast shutter speeds f1.2 can get you, making this a great lens for use in darker situations. The look of its images will be really special. This particular one is a manual focus only lens, but in common with Samyang's other XP lenses, the aperture mechanism is controlled by your camera, and the first thing you'll notice about it is its really large size. It weighs over a kilogram or two and a half pounds, so it'll be better suited to a slow, deliberate workflow, rather than casual street photography or running around mountainsides for landscape pictures. But the build quality of the lens is very nice, being made of metal with a brushed black paint finish. Surprisingly, there's no weather sealing gasket on a rear lens mount. The focus ring is rubberized and turns very heavily and precisely. That's important if you're shooting at f1.2. The grooved focus ring doesn't look or feel as nice in use as the smooth rubber rings on other Samyang XP lenses. The lens exhibits only mild focus breathing, zooming in very slightly as you focus more closely to your subject. Something I didn't really get along with was the lens cap. The filter size is an unusual 86mm in diameter, so the lens cap is naturally very big, but it doesn't fit on very securely and regularly falls off in your camera bag or if you bump it against something. That's not what you want to have to be worrying about on such an expensive lens. It comes with a slightly padded cloth pouch and a large, deep lens hood that snaps in place very securely. Overall, the build quality is very nice if you have strong arms, although I didn't love the new focus ring design. Alright, image quality. I'm going to start by mounting the lens onto my Sony a7R2 with its 42 megapixel full frame sensor. At f1.2, we see excellent resolution in the middle of the image, but weak contrast and a little purple fringing. Let's look over in the corners. They're a lot darker from vignetting and we're spotting just a little chromatic aberration here, but the good news is that resolution continues to be phenomenal up there and contrast seems to be much better, oddly enough. Let's top down just a little to f1.4. The corners here are a little brighter, but the biggest difference is found back in the middle of the image where contrast is greatly improved from before. Stop down again to f2 and contrast becomes perfect and the purple fringing has cleared up. Back in the corners, we continue to see excellent image quality, albeit with a little chromatic aberration still visible. Stop down to f2.8 for a further minuscule improvement. The lens stays this sharp down to f11, although stop down to f16 and the image becomes just marginally softer due to the effects of diffraction. So, even on a high resolution full frame camera, this lens is a bit of a resolution king, providing you with incredibly sharp results no matter what you do, so long as you've got it in focus of course. But when you're shooting at the very widest apertures, you'll have to increase your contrast in editing, which is a slight disappointment. Well, let's really challenge the lens now. I'm going to show it no mercy at all by mounting it onto my Canon EOS M6 Mark II with its incredibly demanding 32.5 megapixel APS-C sensor. 
very few lenses in the world are sharp enough to cope with this challenge. At f1.2, in the middle of the image, we continue to see great sharpness, but that low contrast and purple fringing on contrasting edges are exaggerated even more. Corner image quality is a little softer, but not too bad. Stop down to f1.4 for a tiny improvement in the corners, but again, the middle looks noticeably cleaner already. Stop down to f2 for really excellent image quality in the middle, and the corners, well, they're still slightly soft. f2.8 looks a little punchier, and so does f4, and f5.6 hits a sweet spot, with even the corners looking great now. The lens taste is sharp down to f11, where the effects of diffraction begin to soften the image again. Overall, well, we shouldn't be too surprised that the incredibly difficult APS-C sensor of this particular Canon camera causes some issues for a lens as sharp as this one. It's still able to provide a fair bit of resolution, and on a 24 megapixel APS-C camera, things will look a lot better, but Canon users will actually get a better performance out of the EFM 32mm f1.4 lens. Alright, let's move on and look at distortion and vignetting on a full frame camera. The first thing we notice is moderate barrel distortion, which will be visible on straight lines in some of your pictures. We also get some fairly noticeable vignetting at f1.2, not surprising. Stop down to f2 and that vignetting is pushed into the corners and at f2.8 it's just about gone. Let's take a look at close up image quality. This lens can focus as closely as 34 centimeters to your subject. At f1.2, that low contrast is really taking its toll when shooting close up. f1.4 is much better though, and f2 is nice and sharp. Next, let's see how the lens works against bright light. We encounter quite a serious slip up here. The lens exhibits plenty of flaring, glaring, and a giant rainbow surrounds any bright lights directly in the frame. Thank goodness the lens comes with such a generously sized hood. And while we're working in the dark, let's take a look at coma levels. Over in the corners of the image, bright points of light show some moderate coma smearing and purple fringing. f1.4 looks about the same, f2 is slightly better, and f2.8 looks fine. Now let's take a look at the quality of this lens's bokeh. It's, well, fine. Just averagely smooth here. We don't really see any outlining on bright points of light, but we often see a slight jumbling in the backgrounds. Related to bokeh is longitudinal chromatic aberration. Here at f1.2, we see some green and pink highlighting beyond and before the plane of focus. It stays this colourful down to f2, although the highlighting is beginning to go at about f2.8, so an average performance here. Well, what can we say overall? Every Samyang XP lens I've tested so far has been absolutely phenomenal, but the XP 35mm f1.2 left me with slightly mixed feelings. Its strongest feature is definitely its amazing resolution. This lens is sharp, particularly on a full frame camera, but contrast is an issue at its widest apertures, as are various chromatic aberrations, not to mention some barrel distortion and strong flaring. The Samyang XP 35mm f1.2 isn't quite as phenomenal as the other XP lenses in the series, but it does offer nice build quality and very high resolution at a very bright maximum aperture, and for a lot of people, that's enough to get excited about.